Hey, hey, monkeys, how are you doing? Damien Keys here. Today, I want to talk about building a teaching practice. So over the years, I've dealt with thousands and thousands of musicians that have gone through the educational process, they've learned their instrument in a very, very structured way, and then left their course, their degree, and thought, shit, what am I going to do now? And they're going to move back to where they're from, only to maybe have to go and get a job. And setting up a teaching practice is a great way of being able to make enough money, because the, the hourly rate is very good, make enough money doing what it is that you love to do. Now, I know this is not for everybody, but I see a lot, a lot of musicians that decide to set up their own little teaching practice and then go and set about in doing hundreds of little details that don't need to be done and it doesn't quite take off. I am going to tell you how to do this in 10 steps, possibly 11, but in 10 steps, just the bare bones. Now, I have done this and I've worked with hundreds of people on setting up teaching businesses. So I promise you, I promise you, this is a process I have worked on hundreds of times. I know how to do this. So if you want to be a teacher, follow these steps. And I guarantee if you do them right, you will have a business that means that you don't have to get work anywhere else outside of just teaching your instrument. Okay, tip one, you're gonna need a website. Now, yes, you can have business cards and flyers and you can advertise on Gumtree and you can have social media and these are things I see people doing all of the time, but you're spending a lot of time and effort and you could be doing this a lot simpler. So just get a website. Now, the good news is it's 2017, which means you can build a website for free literally for nothing, for nada, no money whatsoever. And you can do that on say Wix.com. You can learn it in a few hours, maybe take a weekend and you can build your own website. So there's no excuses. But the reason why you need a website is because nowadays, if people need something, they go straight to Google. It's the modern day equivalent of the yellow pages. They're not gonna go onto Facebook to, to try and find something. They're gonna go straight to Google. And if they're gonna go straight to Google, they're gonna to wanna to see some kind of website because that's kind of where people's consumption is when they go onto Google. But that's okay because you can build it for free. Now on your website, you're gonna keep it real, real simple. You can have four pages and those four pages are gonna be a home page which needs to include a picture of you or and a picture of some students because people like to buy from people. They like to put themselves in the place of those people. Then you're gonna have a little bit about what you do and who you are, very, very small amount, some testimonials uh, and a call to action. Very important, a call to action, which basically says, come for a free half an hour consultation, which we'll talk about in a minute. Then you're gonna need an about page, just a bit more about you so you can pad it out. And that's a really good way of telling Google who you are, where you are and what you do. Um, then after that, you're gonna have a contact page, which is just all of your details. And then lastly, but more, most importantly, you're gonna have a blog page, which we'll talk about in a minute, but a blog is really, really important. And that's it, simple as that. That website will then go onto Google and start all the little Google spiders will come in and start finding out who you are. And that means when someone sees your website, they will go, this is professional, this person knows what they're doing. I want to phone them up and have some lessons with that person. Tip two, offer a 30 minute free consultation. Now, the reason why you do this is because this is a try before you buy. This is very, very important. When someone sees your website and says, yeah, this could be right, and then they phone you up, you've got them on the phone. This is the, this is the best way of actually being able to sell them what it is that you do, and more importantly, how you can help them. Now, when you do that, they're still gonna have the option to put the phone down and never see you ever again. However, if you say, why don't you come down, have a half an hour lesson for free, I can see where you're at with your playing, with your singing, you can see what it is I do, and I can recommend what you need to do over the next few weeks and months, and how that will affect you, and how you will improve, then someone's gonna say, oh, that sounds really good, I can find out where, I, where I'm at, where I'm gonna go to, and how they can help me get there. And they probably will come down for that free half an hour consultation, and once they've done that, they're gonna think, yeah, this is comfortable, I feel comfortable with you, I feel comfortable with the surroundings, and at that point, they're more likely to sign on for lessons. Point three, blog posts. Now, going back to your website, you need to have this blog page, and the reason why is because of Google. So on your blog post, what you're gonna do is you're gonna write two blogs every week. Now this, you need patience for this. Two blogs every single week. And on those blogs, you're gonna write about your specialist field. If you're a singing teacher and a singer, you're gonna write about 
the world of pop music and singers and Ed Sheeran and, and what you've done in lessons and anything that you want to write about that you feel passionately about, about singing and singing education. But what's really important on every blog, you're gonna have a different, not loads, you're not gonna cram in, you're not gonna try and fool Google. You're gonna have one key phrase, which could be singing lessons in Bristol or singing teacher in Bristol or Bristol singing lessons or Bristol vocal lessons or wh whatever you can think of. Every single, every single time you do a blog, you just put one of those in. So Google just says, ah, yes, I know. So when someone puts a search into Google, your stuff starts to creep up the rankings because that's all, all Google wants to do Google wants to know what it is that you do so that when someone asks for that thing, they can put together the perfect match. Now, if there are other singing teachers or guitar teachers or drum teachers in your area, this is the perfect way to bypass them on Google because too many people just make a website and leave it sit there. So Google's constantly thinking, going, I wonder if they're still there. I wonder if they just did that, set it up, and now they're off doing something else. I don't want to recommend that website if they're not going to be there all of a sudden your website comes in and you're changing bits and you're updating things. So Google says, well, I know these guys are teachers in the same field, but I know they're there because they're constantly updating their website. And therefore, Google starts to actually push you up the rankings because it knows that you're gonna give them exactly what they want and you are relevant. And that word relevancy is very, very important. So two blog posts every week, around about 300 words. It's basically three quarters of a size of an A4 paper and you just keep that going and that really helps then push that onto your social media, showing you off as an expert. Tip four, offer something to work towards. This is really, really important because I see too many teachers teaching the same thing round and round in circles. Have you done your homework? No, I haven't. Keep going next week and a bit more and a bit more. And then students get bored and they drop off. So have something that they are looking forward to into the future. And this can be as simple as an end of term gig. Every three months, every four months, you get a, a rehearsal room, a community center, a function room, a, a, a gig venue, and you actually put on a little mini gig and if they're guitarists it can be a little jam night and you can bring down one of your drummer friends and a bass player friend if it's singers you actually just get back in tracks and you're actually performing and then what happens is you actually bring in the parents and they can pay two pound on the door because they won't mind and all the money can go to charity or it can go to hiring the community center but what this means is everyone's happy the parents are seeing progression the students have got something to work towards you've got something to work towards when it comes to practice and actually working on songs so that you can really perfect what they're doing everyone's a winner and you've got loads of extra stuff to then push onto your website to then push onto your social media it's really really crucial that you do three or four end of term gigs every single year tip five Grades, ooh, touchy subject because some teachers love grades and doing the graded system and some teachers hate grades and they wanna do their own thing. And that's fine. I'm absolutely not gonna tell you whether you should or you shouldn't be doing grades. You absolutely should be doing grades. But the reason I say that is because again, it gives you something to work towards. And I'm not saying you do it with every single student, but it is a really great way of enticing people in to say, should you want to, we will do the graded system. It's the same thing in every aspect of music education. If you want someone to do a degree, you say, yeah, we're gonna work towards your music career. You get a degree on the, on, on the road of doing that. If you wanna do a level two qualification or whatever it is in other countries, you're saying the same thing. Grades is just an option. So decide whether you want to do grades, but for me personally, parents love it. They really love it. And I've got a bunch of music schools and the parents, you know, not all of them. Sometimes I would say, you don't want to do grades, so don't do the grades. But a lot of parents come in and say, how am I going to see their progression? And you go, you're going to get a big shiny certificate which goes on the fridge. So therefore, you get to actually see that they are progressing. The grades will do that for you. So what I would say is, have a think about it. You don't have to do grades, but it is a really great way of showing progression and actually rewarding people for their work. Tip six, Google AdWords. Now we're coming on to the big one. This is a really, really big one. So yes, you can have business cards. Yes, you can have flyers and you can put them in music shops, but I see that all the time. It's the wrong demographic. You, if you're advertising for guitar lessons in a guitar shop, most of those people aren't gonna be looking for guitar lessons there. I know it sounds silly, but they're not. Your best bet, if you wanna actually target people who are looking for guitar lessons, bass lessons, drum lessons, singing lessons, it's Google. And so we've talked about the natural SEO of Google, 
But there is the cheat, there is the adverts down the side, which you can just pay, which work on a very simple system, which is whoever pays the most, I mean, this is a, this is a very basic way of explaining it, but whoever pays the most, it is an auction, you get to go above that person. So for every click, if this person pays, 50p for a click and this person pays 60p for a click they go above it now there are a few alternate rules that google have put in play but that's a very simple way of looking at it but what it means is with an hour or two's work of learning about google adwords you can have adverts cost per click pay per click adverts on google so that when someone puts in guitar lessons in your area it pops up within a 10 mile radius of you, it pops up and it says your guitar academy, whatever it says at the side, that you can actually get a click that's on that Google front page. That is the most efficient way of advertising for music lessons in 2017. And it has been for quite a while. And yes, you can do social media, and yes, you can do door to door, and yes, you can do flyers, but that at the moment, Cost per click is a bit expensive, but it is the best way of actually getting directly to people who 100% want your product. You need to spend time learning AdWords and actually having a very small amount of budget per day, two pounds, three pounds a day, maybe even less than that, but you know, this is a business. So two pounds, three pounds a day. If you put that into play, you absolutely will get lessons. Tip seven. How much should you charge? Now, this does depend on your age, your experience, where you live, if you live in an affluent area, if you live in a poor area, if there's lots of teachers around you that you're competing with, if you're the only one in the area, all of these play a part. But let's take into consideration that most of you will either be at that kind of degree level stage where you've, you've gone through or are going through a degree or you've got the relevant sort of experience which, which equates to the same thing. So you might not have a degree, but you've gone through it, so your experience as a player is around about the same level. So let's take it from there. I would recommend charging around about 20 pounds an hour. Now, you can charge less, but what you're doing there is you're kind of saying, oh, I'm not really confident with my ability. You can charge more, and again, it depends on all of those other, other aspects that we just talked about, but when you start charging more and you don't have too much experience of, as a teacher, I would say get the experience in first because otherwise it feels like you're ripping people off. So, But what I would say is before you charge anything at all, I would go and do a bunch of lessons. Go and find people and say, I want to get experience as a guitar teacher. I want to learn about this because just because you've learned as a player and just because you've got experience as touring, yes, you absolutely will be able to teach. However, why not go and get a little bit of experience as a teacher, go and find some friends, go and find some friends' kids and actually bring them in and see sort of how fast you can actually train them up to get to a level that you want. Just take a month, maybe two months, because this is a, this is a long-term career idea here. Take between one and maybe three months to actually sit with people and actually teach them to play your instrument, teach them to sing, teach them some drums. See what it's like spending time sat next to someone with an instrument who just goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Because the, 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 the thing I noticed the most when I used to train up teachers for BIM, I get loads of guys from the music industry that have gone on massive, massive tours that were always terrified of teaching. And I'd say, you've got all the experience in the world. This is going to be fantastic. They'd always pitch it too high. They'd always come in and they'd, and they'd have like reams of paper. They've over-prepared like crazy. And like, you're going to find the same. When people come to lessons for you at the beginning, they're not going to be coming in. They're not going to be Mark Knopfler. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to just walk in and be Mariah Carey. They're going to be beginners. So when you're starting as a guitarist or as a bass player, and you're going to be thinking, right, we're going to do the major scale. Most of them will go, I don't know how to hold this. It's not even in tune. I've only got three strings on this. So so it's, it's amazing how much you have to train your brain to take things way back to the beginning. So you put the work into playing your instrument. Why not put the work into actually learning to teach rather than just expecting people to pay for it? Tip eight, website domain names. Now, don't be clever. I remember being in a, a tutorial with a guy who was setting up his teaching business and he said, I've got a name for my business. It's called A New Way. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, he was like, it's a new way of guitar teaching. And I was like, what, what was wrong with the old way of guitar teaching? And why doesn't it say guitar teaching? It just says a new way. It could be anything. It sounds like a shitty band from the 80s. So he was just trying to be too clever. And now in this day and age where domain names, social media, these things matter. So I would actually get singing lessons or guitar lessons or drum lessons into the name. I probably would even make it as simple as this. If you are from a city, put the city, 
put the instrument and put lessons after it. Because there's nothing wrong with putting bristolguitarlessons.com or bristolguitarteacher.com because Google will go, oh, I know exactly what you guys are. So just, you're just giving yourself a helping hand rather than trying to overthink and be really clever with some kind of crazy brand. Frogfish guitar lessons. Like, you just, just put the city you're in. Make it simple. Keep this as simple as possible. You're not looking to take over the world like this. What you're looking to do is make money as quick as possible using the skills that you've spent time learning, implementing it into others. So if you are wanting to take over your city, use your city, use the instrument, and then use lessons or teacher. Or if that's taken, go and find something very similar. Tip nine, the right thing to do is always the right thing to do. Now, the reason why I say this is because when you start teaching, the money's good. You're getting 20, 25 pounds an hour, which is a really good hourly rate compared to going and working in Tesco's. So don't abuse that. When someone comes in for lessons, if they are not ready for one hour lessons, offer them half an hour lessons. If they can't afford to come every week, just say, we'll come every other week. Make it the right thing for these students because I promise you they will fall off if you try and force what you need money-wise onto them. Your best bet, much, much better to have 20 students over 10 hours rather than 10 students over 10 hours who can't quite afford the time or the money because they'll drop off and you'll end up with four students because you tried to force them to come in too often or pay too much money. So the right thing to do is always the right thing to do. Tip 10, social media. Now social media does play a big part in this, but this is not where you advertise for students in my opinion. This is social proofing. You've got, you've got Google, AdWords, and your website. That's where people are going to find out about you. Then they're going to come and have a look at your socials, and they're going to see that you do teach. They are going to see that you are an expert. They are going to see that you, your students are really happy. So all of that social proofing goes into people saying, yeah, I can trust this person. This person is going to deliver exactly what they say they do because they already are doing it. And it's a chance for you to show off your students and how proud you are. It's a chance to show off the gigs and how proud you are of being a part of them. So this is about social proofing in social media and it's not just about advertising because this is the best, best, best place for you to show off your students and that is the best advert possible to get new students involved. And tip 11. I know this is a top 10 video but I came up with an 11th one so I think it's important and that is keep your website about your business. I see far too many singer teachers or drum teachers, bass teachers, violin teachers who decide to put all of their other shit into their website because they can, because they can just crowbar in. By the way, this is my originals band. I'm really proud of it. By the way, I'm also a session player and if you want to hire me, it's here. By the way, I'm also in a functions band and if you've got a wedding, then why don't you let us play? It's just not the right time. This is a time where the consumption of the consumer is saying, I need a guitar teacher. I need a drum teacher. I'm looking for a singing teacher for my six-year-old. That's what they've gone looking for. That's what they found. They, this is not Tesco's. They're not going to go, I'm looking for a singing teacher for my six-year-old. But as it happens, I am looking for a session musician. It doesn't work like that. So just stop clouding everything by putting all of your other shit on your website because this is about the consumer and not about you. So just keep it really, really simple. This is a singing teaching website or a guitar teaching website. This is about finding a guitar teacher in the local area. Everything else you can do on different websites, on different socials and stop trying to integrate them because all you're doing is confusing people with who it is you are and you're worrying people and they don't need that. They just want to say, I'm looking for a guitar teacher and you say, perfect. I'm a guitar teacher. They say, fantastic. And everything transactional happens from that point. So don't overcomplicate what you do just because you're excited about your originals band or being a session player. Keep this about the business in hand. And those are my tips for you setting up a teaching business. Now, like I say, it's not for everybody, but I see a lot of people, a lot of people who go through college and then fuck this up by doing this very, very badly. Stick to these tips, okay? Don't go and add in loads of extra stuff. Just stick to the basics. 
You make a website, you advertise the website, you spend time on blogs because that helps Google, and then what you do is you worry about the product. You look after your students. If you look after your students, I guarantee your student numbers will grow. If you're offering them a gig, if you're saying, yeah, we can do the grades, if you're saying, yeah, we're gonna work on some Green Day because I know you like Green Day, however, I'm gonna get my techniques that I want you to learn in there, then they will love you for it, they will appreciate it, and they will get a lot out of it. So think about them and not about you. Anything you need, leave comments below and I will answer it, but I think that's the, the, the most simplest form of you being able to make a living outside of college without having to go and get a J-O-B. Anything you need, hit me up, smash the subscribe, smash the like, and just come and say hello. I'm after some more engagement. So catch you guys again soon.